In the name of Jesus, welcome to God's house. This week, we see Jesus reveal his glory as the Messiah as he fulfills an ancient prophecy of Moses. And he comes speaking words of grace, of truth, and also of power. So as we contemplate the power, the saving power of the word of the Messiah, the prophet who would be like Moses, it's also our prayer today that God would give us the wisdom to set aside the distractions and and the voices of this world and do as Moses instructed God's people long ago when he first told them about this coming prophet. Listen to him. Of all the things in the world, of all the things we can spend our time and our devotion on, this is what we ask God to help us do. Listen to Jesus. And that's the theme of our worship today. So, our worship begins on page four of your service folder. You're invited to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. Let us acknowledge that we too have walked in the darkness. And so confess our sins to the Lord. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God invites people from every time and place from every tribe, nation, and kingdom under heaven to know the unsearchable riches of his Son, Jesus Christ, whom he has given to be the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Come, let us praise the Lord God, who alone does marvelous deeds. May the whole earth be filled with his glory.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, you know that we are surrounded by many dangers and that we often stumble and fall. Strengthen us in body and mind and bring us safely through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As God's people are poised to take possession of the promised land, and Moses is about to take his leave of God's people to go to his heavenly home, the Lord promises that one day he would send another prophet like Moses, a prophet who, unlike God himself at Mount Sinai, would be approachable. But a prophet who, for that reason, simply because he's approachable, like Moses was, like Jesus would be, should not for that reason be pushed aside or ignored. We read from Deuteronomy chapter 18, which also serves as the basis for the sermon. Moses says, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him. For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, or we will die. The Lord said to me, What they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command him. If anyone does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name, I myself will call him to account. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded him to say, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, must be put to death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You're invited to speak together with me the words of the psalm of the day. The blessings we hear of listening to and meditating on and focusing on God's word as opposed to the words of men. We read, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. As the prophet who Moses foretold, the word of Jesus is, of course, the word of God himself. And so it is a word that graciously calls us to faith. It's a word that makes us members of God's household, but it's also a word that can only be resisted or ignored to the greatest of peril to those who would do so. Our second lesson is from Hebrews chapter 3. Therefore, holy brothers, who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and high priest whom we confess. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, testifying to what would be said in the future. But Christ is faithful as a son over God's house, and we are his house if we hold on to our courage 
and the hope of which we boast. So, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the desert, where your fathers tested and tried me and for 40 years saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. And I said, their hearts are always going astray and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read together the verse of the day. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Please stand for the gospel of Christ. As the prophet whom Moses foretold, who is greater than Moses, the word of Christ came not only with grace and truth, but also with power. And so, lest we end up as the demons whom Christ drives away in the gospel lesson, let us do as Moses commanded in Deuteronomy chapter 18, and always, always, always submit ourselves to Christ and listen first and foremost to Christ. We read, They went to Capernaum, And when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue, who was possessed by an evil spirit, cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet said Jesus sternly, come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, who is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated as we join to sing the hymn of the day. We sing verses 1 through 3 of thy strong word.
Peace be to all of you who are in Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, why don't people listen to pastors? Now, of course, you're all here right now listening to me. At least I hope you haven't checked out yet. But really, even if you're here every single week, or if you're at home watching on YouTube every single week, that doesn't necessarily mean that you always listen to what Pastor Hedrick and I say at this place. And truth be told, we don't always listen to ourselves very well. Even though when we speak it faithfully, it is the Word of God that we're sharing. So why is that? Is it because perhaps we are unimpressive mouthpieces of Christ? Is it perhaps because we sometimes, all of us, pastors included, kind of feel like we know what God says, at least about most things, and so we don't always listen very carefully? Is it because maybe sometimes we just have bad memories and we hear what he says, but we just can't bring it back when we need it? Or is it sometimes because we tend to be more interested in things like politics or sports or culture or COVID, and therefore we give more time and attention to the musings of political and cultural commentators than we give to God himself. Probably those are some of the reasons, and probably there's a whole lot more, right? But in the Word of God that is before us today from Deuteronomy chapter 18, God makes it pretty clear that we need to stop. It's not that we can't care about the things of this world. It's, it's not that we have to stay ignorant of the things of this world. But what we need to do is stop giving the cultural and political, the seemingly practical prophets of this age, the sort of devotion that is only rightfully reserved for the prophet about whom Moses wrote so long ago. No matter what is going on, no matter how crazy life in America or life in your world might get, we should always listen most eagerly and most enthusiastically and with the most attention and devotion to Christ. Let me read again the Word of God from Deuteronomy chapter 18, where Moses writes, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him. For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, or we will die. The Lord said to me, what they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command him. Now, before we go any further, it's important to have a little background here. See, the, the natives of Canaan, the people into whose land the Israelites were about to be moving, the natives of Canaan practiced all sorts of, we would consider it crazy, but it was normal at this time in, in this place. They practiced omen reading, they practiced divination, and other crazy satanic things like that in order to, at least in their minds, make it through this practical life better, to get the crops to grow, right, to, to keep the armies away. And so in the section right before the words that we just read, Moses had just finished warning the people of Israel not to listen to the voices that would abound in the land of Canaan. And then in, in this section that we are focusing on, as he's telling the people of Israel who they ought to listen to, he breaks into this bit of prophecy. He says that the Israelites should listen only to true prophets of God, especially to this one particular prophet 
whom God would raise up in the future, one who would in many ways be like Moses, a prophet who now we know to be Jesus. And God is very serious, dead serious about this. He says, if anyone does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name, I myself will call him to account. Which kind of makes sense, right? Kind of a simple thing. Okay, God's going to give us another prophet like Moses. We should listen. Seems pretty simple. Probably seems pretty simple to the Israelites too. But of course, God knows it's not quite that simple in a sinful world. Because just as when God wasn't thundering at them from a burning mountain, it hadn't taken very long for the people of Israel to become unimpressed with little old humble Moses. God knew that it would also be very easy for the same thing to happen when his word would come through a prophet who would be like Moses. See, God could have come to this world directly. He, he could have continued to speak to the people of Israel and to the whole world as he really is, right? He, Jesus could have come with all of his power. He could have come with thousands upon thousands of angels, and he could have forced everyone in this rebellious world to listen to him from their knees. But he didn't because... He didn't want to scare us away. Right? He, he came in the way he came because he said, I don't want to break the bruised reeds. And you smoldering wicks, I don't want to snuff you out. And so, so he didn't. The king of kings, the lord of hosts, the lord of armies, as the biblical Hebrew calls him, comes born of a virgin in a backwater town he comes as a mere man who looks like any other, just like Moses was. And so just like it was with Moses, people just didn't listen. Right? Pharisees and Sadducees, they found his teaching offensive or threatening, but not in the way <laughs> that it really was, threatening to their worldly positions. And the masses, after it became clear that Jesus was more interested in an eternal kingdom than in a political kingdom, they kind of found him a little bit irrelevant. And so though they had waited for him for a thousand years, more really, though this is the very Son of God, God himself, who walks among them, though, as Peter once confessed, this is, this is the one who has the words of eternal life most people, when God was walking among them, just didn't listen. It's a sad history. But of course, as we say it's a sad history for the Israelites, and we point the finger, we always, as they teach you in first grade, you always have three pointing back at you, right? We don't always listen much better. We're too busy. We're too, too busy to have those daily personal devotions, those devotions with our families. Or we're too busy to stick around for an extra hour on Sunday mornings and go to Bible class. But somehow we find a way to keep up with our Facebook friends or to listen to our favorite political pundits podcast, or to keep up with our favorite TV series. It's not that we actually think God's word is irrelevant. It's not that any of us ignores him on purpose, but the distractions of life and the voices of our own minds sometimes drown out much of what he has to say or they simply pull us away from him so that we just don't listen to him at all. And so the sad history of Israel is our sad history too.
Then again, by God's grace, we're still here today, right? And we may not do it perfectly, but we are prompted by the Spirit, and we're, we're here because we're trying to listen to Jesus. And so the good news is that despite our sins, despite our failures, whether it's just blatantly pushing him aside or it's letting our own impressions always trump what he tells us in his word, just as it was for those Israelites who listened to him, albeit imperfectly in the past, God still speaks gracious words to us, words of power, words of wonder, words of life. And if you think about it, that, that situation that happened with those few Israelites who did stick by him even when the world was rejecting him, that is the same for us too, who, who by God's grace keep trying to listen even though we keep being pulled away. We hear the same wonderful things. Like, they heard amazing things. They, they saw nails being driven through his hands, and what did they hear? They heard, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And we hear the same grace for us. They heard Jesus cry when he is dying. It's finished. It's paid in full. And we hear the same. And when they heard him cry, Father, into, into your hands I commit my spirit, and they thought they had heard the last of him they heard wrong, right? Because three days later, they heard him again, it's I, don't be afraid. And so we hear him say the same things to us. I am here. I'm not gone, don't be afraid. And when 40 days later, Jesus left them and, and he ascended to his rightful place in the throne room of heaven, and those people who were standing there watching him go up, heard those, heard those beautiful words that sustained them. Those words are still the same words that sustain us. Surely, I may be there, but I am also here with you. And I will be with you always, to the very end of the age. So, my friends, of all the voices that vie for your attention, there is only one that deserves our attention in, in undivided devotion. So let's be sure to let the Word of Jesus, the Word of God, have the, have the place in our schedules and the place in our hearts that it deserves. Because the more you listen to Jesus, the more you're going to find that He lived in the real world. And he had real solutions for real problems. And so the better we listen to him, the more equipped we will be to deal with the real world problems that we have to deal with every day. And the more and the better we listen to him, the more eager we will be and the better prepared we will be to one day leave this world with all of its problems behind and be ushered into the better one the eternal one. So listen to Jesus. Always listen to Jesus. Because there's no one better to listen to. Amen. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you listen to him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. For our confession of faith today, we use the words of the Nicene Creed. It's on page 10 of the service folder. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for prayer. In our special prayers today, we uh, come to God on behalf of Shirley Ranowski as she recovers from surgery. Bright, shining light of God, you scatter the shadows and rouse us for the good life by bringing us to the dawn of your radiance. Shine into our hearts and awaken in us the promise of another week in your grace. Lord, you are light and you are life. You are the word made flesh and you dwell among us. You have the words of eternal life. Your revelation is strong to deliver us. Come, take root in us and grow. Save us from the shallowness and from the spiritual drought that causes your saving word to come to nothing in our hearts. Preserve us from the old evil foe who robs us of the word's strong power by closing our hearts to its appeal. Spare us concern over daily anxieties, lest we dismiss the gospel before it brightens our horizons or gives promise to the days before us. Plant your word in our hearts. Protect and preserve its power. Let it find welcome and nurture that it may grow and bear rich fruit in our daily living. Let nothing in this life so distract us, let no trouble so embitter us, that the joy and promise and saving strength of the Word's message is lost on us. Power, life, and light are ours only through your holy revelation. So help us to hear the Word. And having heard it, help us to keep it. And keeping it, help those with whom we live see what its power can do. The world around us is in turmoil. Hearts fail for fear. Anger, hatred, impatience, and distrust are all around and threaten our lives and the future of our world. Within that cosmic storm are also the personal stresses that beset us. Today we especially pray that you would keep Shirley Ranowski as she recovers from surgery, that you would give that surgery success and give her continued confidence and courage in you. Lord, finally we pray that you would open this world's heart to the better way revealed in your holy word. Bring peace on earth, and do not abandon that goodwill toward us that is our only hope, our own and only strong hope. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, Lord, we also humbly offer our prayer and praise in the words that Christ himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All glory and splendor, thanks and praise are yours, O Lord, Heavenly Father. You pierce the gloomy darkness of sin and unbelief with the brilliant light of your Son. You guided the Magi to worship the Christ and revealed the mystery of your eternal plan to save both Jew and Gentile. You declared Jesus your beloved Son at the Jordan River, and with your Spirit you anointed him to be the Savior of all people. Bless our reception of your Son's body and blood, that we may shine with the joy of faith. Use this most holy sacrament to illumine our lives and minds with Christ's forgiveness, peace, and comfort. Refresh our faith and help us to reflect his truth and his grace to the world. We ask this, that you may receive endless honor, glory, and praise from every tribe and language and people and nation. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I invite all those who are one with us in the faith to come forward and receive in the bread and wine the very body and blood of Christ that he gave to forgive you of your sins, to connect you to himself, and to connect you to all of his holy body, the church. As you come forward, Please remember to extend your hand flat and your fingers upward to receive the elements. And you don't have to wait until someone has received it to begin to come forward. Just leave some space between you. All things are ready. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed on the cross to forgive you of all of your sins. The 
the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And receive the sign of the cross on the head and the heart to remind you that you are a redeemed child of Christ. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. body of Christ given for you the blood of Christ shed for you the body of Christ given for you the blood of Christ shed for you Please stand. And now may this true body and blood of the Savior both strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until that glorious day when your faith becomes perfect sight. 
depart in God's peace. Amen. And let us pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And brothers and sisters, go now in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we join together to sing our final hymn, God Has Spoken by His Prophets. In the name of Jesus again, good, good afternoon, good morning, if you're watching Sunday morning. Um, I have no special announcements for you today other than to share with you a little update on our school uh, from our school administrator this year, uh, Mrs. Lisa Dunsmore. So it is recorded for you right here. Very well done. Good stuff going on at the school.
Greetings from Christ Lutheran School. We are very thankful that we have been able to hold in-person classes for the whole first semester of school. And considering everything going on, it has gone smoothly. We would like to invite you to visit our school via our website, a nice place you can visit to learn more about what we've been doing, clseagleriver.org. There is a school news tab on there. You can check out our monthly newsletter, our weekly student-produced newspaper, which is called the Cardinal Song. We have audio recordings there, and we have some video recordings of events that we have had also. So please check that out to learn more about what we've been doing. We are also very happy that Eve Hedrick has accepted the call to be our preschool teacher this coming fall. Preschool will be Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday mornings, and three and a half and four-year-olds will be attending that. The school website also has a preschool page. It is not updated yet, but please check it out in a few weeks with all the details. If you know of anyone that might be interested in having their children hear God's word and learn and grow together, please share that with them. You know our church is having a building project coming up pretty soon. The students at Christ Lutheran have been very excited about that. And so for our first mission project for first semester, we had Builders for Christ. They may be involved in our building project, so the kids thought that was a good idea. They set a goal of $500 for their mission offerings in the first semester. They came up with a visual to help them see the progress. Here is a ladder. This is the visual of for the students. Here is Bob the Builder, and as the students collect mission offerings of $50 increments, Bob adds a portion of the church building to this. You can see Bob built the entire church, and even above that, it was amazing. The students surpassed their goal, and their offerings total $725 for the first semester. So we were very excited about that. Uh, another exciting thing with the building project that the upper grade students got into, specifically a seventh grader made up a survey board. This survey board is of various playground equipment that he thought would be very fun to install in our new playground. So the different playground equipment pieces on here, which I was not familiar with. This is called a nest swing, which you sit on and you can bounce on. We have a climbing rock wall. We have traditional swings. We have a gaga ball pit. There is a zip line, a merry-go-round, a seesaw, and a slide. Each student got five stars to place wherever they wanted with their preferences. I have not counted them up, but it looks pretty even across the board. I think a couple of these look like they might be in the running for the best or the most popular uh, playground equipment. We are hoping that when it comes time for the playground to be constructed that they consider um, what the students have chosen in, in putting that together. Coming up on February 9th, we have our 100th day of school. We will also be having our Valentine's party on that day. The kids will join together in the gym and have different stations for games. They will also be able to make Valentine's cards for the shut-ins, which we are happy to mail out to them to share the joy of Jesus with them for Valentine's Day. February 26th, we are having our second annual Winter Carnival. They are very excited about that. We have some very creative parents that have put together some interesting competitions indoors and outdoors with other activities. So we look forward to an afternoon of fun there. In sharing all of these things with you, they could not be possible without all of you. And in my mind, I thought, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then the teacher portion of me kicked in and I thought, how could this be a teachable moment? Our students have been practicing 
in grammar, the past tense, present tense, and future tense. So I would like to apply what we've learned at school and say, we thank you that you prayed for us in the first semester. We thank you that you are praying for us in the second semester. And we thank you that you will or shall pray for us in the future. Have a great rest of your week. I'll usher you out.